Hey there, hands-on transition fans. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is using Google Forms for data collection. I've been using Google Forms for the last couple of years to collect data for my students with IEPs, and it is amazing. There are limitless possibilities for the ways you can collect data, and it keeps it all in a fantastic organized place right there in your Google Drive. You can totally go paperless. So while there are a lot of different types of Google Forms you can create for IEP goals, today I'm specifically going to go over two types. So we're going to make one for WH questions, which is I'm sure a goal that you've written for a lot of your IEP students. And the other one I want to talk about is temporal words. So first, next, and last, which is another very common goal for a lot of our students. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to share my screen here with you. Here we go. And we're going to start out in our Google Drive. So to make a new form, we're just going to go over here to the New button. And we're going to go down to More, and we're going to select Google Forms. It's got this little purple bulleted image next to it for you. We're going to make a brand new one here. So this is what an unused brand new Google form is going to look like for you. So we're going to start with our title and I like to title my um, Google forms for data collection by student name. It makes it really easy to search for that way. So I usually go last name first. So we'll just call this one Smith S for our student. And then we are going to title it his IEP goal for reading comprehension. And you can make, you can title it whatever you want, but I found that in terms of when it comes to searching through a bunch of the forms that I have in my drive, making it something clear and easily searchable is key. So in the form description, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the actual goal terminology from the student's IEP and plug it right in there. So this will help out when you have paras or classroom aides fill out these forms. It's gonna help them remember exactly what the goal wording is and what it, they're supposed to be monitoring for. So I have saved a couple of my standard um, IEP goal verbiage here. So we're gonna pull one that I've removed the date and student name from. And this is the exact wording that I have in this IEP. So we will just plug that in right here. And I have these for sale on my Teachers Pay Teachers account. And you could be able to fill in your own date and your own student name and alter things like the percent accuracy or the number of opportunities that a student's going to do. So I have by date after reading a beginning second grade level literary text, student will answer WH questions who, what, when, and where by referring to key details independently with 75% accuracy. So 75% is going to be three out of the four questions or two out of three texts. So two out of three opportunities essentially. So by pulling out things like exactly what the student needs to do, so he's answering four questions and he needs to do it independently, that's going to be the basis for how I build my Google form. So what I'm gonna do here is that Google Forms provides you with this first box. And if you just click on it and go over here, we can select the type of question that we want. So because of um, the multiple pieces of this goal, it's not just answering one thing, he needs to answer four things. I'm gonna go with the checkboard grid. This is one of my favorites. So in the first question, we're gonna pull out something very simple to title it because we already know what the goal is about. So I'm just gonna put answer WH questions independently. So it's just kind of a summary of the goal. So in the rows, which we know are gonna go horizontally, that's where we're gonna put the WH questions. So we'll start with answer who, Second one will go answer what? Answer when? 
and answer where. So if you have for your students goals the why and the how, which was a little too advanced for this student, you can plug those into the rows as well. And so for the columns, which we know go vertically and up and down, I'm going to put in prompts because this is an independence level question um, goal. He needs to answer them independently. So if prompts are used, that's something that I'm going to want to track. So I'm going to plug that in here as well. So for the first column, it's going to be independent. And we'll get to see what this looks like when I'm finished, and it'll make a little more sense. For the second one, I'm going to put with one prompt. And for the last one, I'm going to go two or more prompts, because at that point, it's um, he's not achieving the goal. So I don't need to add like three, four, or five prompts. You could if you wanted to, but it just gets a little unnecessary at that point. All right, so the other thing that I want to do is I want to give an option for no response, because as we know, <laughs> oftentimes students will not participate in an activity or they just don't ever get it or they refuse, or a behavior gets in the way. And that's something that I like to keep track of as well. So I'm gonna put um, no response. And I'm also gonna add one for refused, because I get a lot of students who refuse to answer the question. All right, so we have the rows that address the pieces of what our student is trying to do. So who, what, when, where. And then we have our columns that identify prompts, independent level, no response, and then refuse to answer a question. So what I want to do with this is I'm going to require a response in each row. Because when I give this form out to classroom aides or paras to use, or even if I'm using it myself, I need to be sure that the student has addressed each question so that I can get accurate data. So requiring a response in each row will force whoever's answering it to put a response in before they can move on. So I also want to add in a second question. So this right here is going to address the IEP goal. We're going to be able to track that data, but I always like to add a second piece in here for data tracking. So what I'm going to add here is a multiple choice question. And this is going to be, who is taking the data? Now, the reason I like to do this is because when I go back and look at the goals um, and see how kids are progressing, I can see who exactly is taking data and who isn't. And that way I can address that with my staff. So if somebody is taking more data than another staff member for a student, or if somebody isn't tracking data at all, I can show them that I can see that in my drive and we can talk about that as a team. So we are going to select multiple choice and I'm gonna just put in staff members names. So let's say I have a staff named Jane. I have a staff named Mark. And then I have myself. Okay, and I'm also going to make this a required response. That way, whoever's putting in data has to put in that they did it. And then I'm going to jump back up here. I forgot something I wanted to do, but this is good for you to see anyway that you can add questions wherever you want. So I'm going to add a second question. And I'm actually going to move it up to the top. And what I want to know here is the date. So right down here, if you scroll all the way down, you can select the date. And we're just going to write today's date. And I'm going to make this a required question as well. This is going to be huge. As you know, for data tracking, we definitely need to know what date the data was taken. Helps you determine things like, are students not performing on Tuesdays? Is Monday their worst day coming back from the weekend? It just kind of gives you a better concept of um, behavior wise, when they're performing and when they're not performing. And of course, it helps you track their progress through time. So to reiterate, we have a title, which I start with the student's last name, which makes it easily searchable. We have the date, which is a required question. 
so that we can keep track of time progress. We have our first base question, which goes over the goal. So answer WH questions independently. And now you can see how that turns out. So we have an independent, one prompt, two or more prompts, no response, and refused. And we can answer that for who, what, when, and where. And then we have who is taking the data. So we can you need to select your name, and that'll be a required question as well. And you know that you've selected required question if this little red star is up by the questions here. And that's pretty much it. We finished this one. So if you click up here for untitled form, it'll bring your title straight up there. And that's it. You've got it done. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is you can preview it to see what it looks like for yourself. So let's click this eyeball up here, and we'll take a look at it. And this is your completed data tracking form. You can see all of your questions here. Take a look at what the layout looks like. Submit buttons down here. It's so easy for staff to use. And then what we can do additionally, we'll go back to our form here, is you can send it to staff. So we're going to send one to ourselves at gmail.com. All right. So you put in who you want to be able to fill out the form right here. So what I like to do is make a Gmail account for my classroom, and then I send all the forms to that, and then I allow the paras to go in, and then they can fill out the forms from there. It's really cool, and it helps keep everything in one place. Okay, so it's gonna come up with the subject for the student, and then I've invited you to fill out a form. And we're gonna send that off to the email address that we want to send it to. Now, once things start coming in, you can go here to the responses page. So it's right here. So you have questions, it shows here, and then responses. And once your responses start coming in from your staff or from yourself, they're gonna pop up here. It's super cool. So let's go to our email. And let's fill out the form so you can see what a response looks like. Okay, so here you can see in the inbox, this is the Google form that I have sent. And it's super easy, you just open it up and it has fill out form. So they're just gonna click on that. Form opens up and we'll put in today's date and it comes up automatically for them so that there's no thinking involved and we don't get confused about what day it is. And then let's say right here that your student answers who independently, um, what with one prompt, refused to answer when, and got where with one prompt. And then I am taking the data and I hit submit and that's it. And if they want to do it again, if the student's reading another book, so they're going to do another opportunity, they can submit another response and it opens up the form once again. So let's go back to my account. Right here. And you can see my responses. I have one response. The date is for today, it shows me the date. And it shows me right here that they answered who independently. They answered what with one prompt, they answered when was refused, and where was also one prompt. It's beautifully color-coded, looks amazing in an IEP meeting, and parents love to see it. And then, right now, 100% of the responses for who's taking data are me. And there you go. It's pretty cool. It's super easy. So if you want to learn more, on my next video, I'm gonna do the temporal words and you can check into that one and that one will also be available on my Teachers Pay Teachers store. All right, thanks for watching and we will see you guys for the next video.